Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP Tom Morgan. I wanted to show you in this video how I'm using OBS to create a soundboard for Microsoft Teams. Now you have to bear with me a little bit in this video because I'd normally use OBS um, to kind of uh, put the video together and, and not, for, not for editing, I tend to do all the editing live, but all the scenes, um, the audio mixing, I'm much more comfortable using OBS um, to kind of deliver the video. And I'm not doing that today because I want to show you some parts of OBS. And if I start clicking around in OBS, it's going to kind of ruin the video and you're not going to be able to see some things. So uh, I'm doing it differently this time just so I don't have to use OBS. So bear with me um, if the if the kind of things are all a little bit over the place, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Okay. So uh, the aim of the game is to create a soundboard that I can use in Microsoft Teams in meetings to make meetings just a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun. And this is how I've done it in OBS. So this is my actual OBS um, sort of setup system. You can see it's actually right now because actually you can see the microphone uh, gain, oh, sorry, the microphone levels because I'm talking, even though I'm not actually using it kind of for this video. What I've done is I've created a new scene down here. These are all my other scenes. You can see like you may recognize them if like you watch any of my other videos. There's ones for like the intros, the outros, the live shows, um, some other things. Uh, yeah, and um, I've created a new one here called soundboard scene. And this is where I'm gonna put all the sounds that I'm gonna use in my soundboard. And it gives me just somewhere to kind of put them all, collate them all together, clump them all together. That way, I don't really want to put them into some of my other ones that I'm already kind of using for other things because it's really only going to be in Microsoft Teams meetings that I, I care about using these sounds. So that's what I've done. So new scene, and then within it, in that scene down here, I've created uh, a new source for every sound that I want to generate. And I do that by clicking the plus sign and going to media source and giving it a new name and then you just choose the file that you want from your hard drive, whatever, your WAV file, your MP3 file. What's really important to remember though is to untick this bit here that says restart playback when source becomes active. It's really, uh, that's an important one because if you don't do that, then every time you load this scene, even if you go kind of from a blank scene and you come back to here, it's gonna play all of those audio files again, all at the same time, and it's just gonna sound horrendous. So just remember to do that. Just untick for each of these. You just need to untick, here's the one I just created actually, uh, untick restart playback. Um, you don't want that. Okay, so, so you go through the process. I'm gonna get rid of that one. Um, you go through the process of building all these up and that's great. The nice thing about soundboards though is uh, you want to be able to do it with a keyboard shortcut. So you want to quickly trigger with a keyboard shortcut. And you can do that right inside OBS as well. So if you go to settings and then go to hotkeys and then if you there's hotkeys for everything in OBS and you can change the hotkeys. So if you go all the way down to the bottom, you can actually set hotkeys for individual scenes and sources within those scenes. So if I go down far enough, I'll start to see the names of some of these sources. Um, and there's quite a few of them because I've got sources for all sorts of things, but here's one here, cow audio. Um, and that lines up with this source here and it's a mooing cow. So. I've set that to be the control and the number two on the keypad. Um, and that's why I've, I've named this audio source with a two. So I remember it's number two on the keypad. That's all that's going on there. I just sort of manually renamed these sources. Um, so I remembered. So you can go through and you wanna put it on the restart uh, action. And that just restarts the audio from the beginning and plays it. That's all it does. If you've got a really long one, you could make another hotkey for stopping it as well and just have restart and stop or play and pause, whatever. It's up to you, really. Um, all sorts of things. But it's worth just looking through these hotkeys and just setting up the hotkeys that you want so you can quickly play. And all the things I'm telling you are kind of to get it into a Microsoft Teams meeting, and that sort of makes sense. But actually, if you use OBS a lot, you could use this for streaming, you could use it for videos, do it however you want really. I'm just doing it on a sort of separate scene because I wanna use all these in a Teams meeting. Okay, so we can make all the sounds and that's great. Couple of extra things we can do. So by default, you won't hear these sounds. Um, they'll get sent to uh, sort of through OBS, but unless you're monitoring for them, you won't hear them. So um, for any of these, you can change the, uh, the audio. So uh, what do I mean by that? If you go to uh, edit and advanced audio properties, you'll see, oops, I didn't mean to do that. 
uh, you'll see an entry for every audio source and you can change the audio monitoring to monitor an output. What does this mean? It means, so monitor off means it just gets sent to the output. So if you're recording the file or streaming from OBS or you're recording to OBS, it'll get sent to the recording. Um, we're, I'm gonna talk about the plugin that we use to get it into Teams in a minute, it'll go there as well. But you can also do um, monitor only and you can do monitor and output. And that also plays it to whatever device you have set up as monitor. So in your settings, uh somewhere in the audio you set the monitoring device so whatever set of speakers you want to monitor to uh so these might be your desktop speakers or you might have a particular headphone or usb headphone or whatever um you want to send it to you can do that i'm sending it to uh i've got a blue yeti stereo microphone and it's got a clever thing where it actually acts as a sound card and then gives you like um a headphone jack you can put in and it will also then ghost the uh, sort of feedback the um the, the microphone input as well without any delay so that's quite nice so that's what I tend to do um, but yeah just set it up however it makes sense so that you can actually hear those audio sounds as well and then the final thing you need to do that um, I've covered kind of in the blog post and it might be easier to go and look at the blog post for this bit uh, just to get the links and everything like that there's an there's a plugin uh, new tech do a NDI plugin it's like a virtual input uh, it shows up, it means that the output from OBS shows up in uh, in Teams. It gives you this thing here, like main output thing, and then it just means that it shows up in Teams as a uh, an audio device. So you set your microphone to be that. It's called like Line In NDI Audio Tech. I'll put a screenshot in the blog post. Um, and you set it up like that, and that way... Uh, Anything then that comes out of OBS will go into Teams as the audio input and that's how you can then, you can have this. Actually what you might want, to, you've got the, I've got mine set up so the microphone is kind of always set on any scene, you don't have to add it every time. Yours might be different, you might have your uh, audio, your microphone set as a source in here as well, in which case you might want to do that on this scene, you can kind of play around with however it works for you. What you want to make sure though is that in OBS you've got the the microphone set and you've got these set as well um, and, and this scene is active. One of the things about the, the hotkeys, um, just quickly, the scene needs to be active for the hotkeys to work. So this sort of soundboard scene needs to be set here um, and then, then, then you're fine. Then like if you've done that, then the, the hotkeys will work just fine. Even when OBS doesn't have the focus. So you can be in Microsoft Teams and uh, those hotkeys will all still work fine, which is great. Okay, that's a really quick how-to. Um, I hope it's been useful. Um, if you've got any questions, shout, because sometimes I kind of take things for granted, especially around OBS, um, that have kind of probably been covered elsewhere and I kind of forget to explain them and stuff. There's also the blog post, which I go through exactly kind of in detail, but in text with screenshots. That might be useful as well. Make sure you subscribe um, to the channel because you'll get all sorts of videos about mostly Microsoft Teams development stuff, but sometimes it kind of goes sideways a bit like this where it's kind of to do with Teams, um, but kind of just interesting stuff that I find out. All right, thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.